This week, the FAA says that we have to register to fly our drones. Philips decides to drop support for third-party bulbs, but then changes its mind, and the Internet of Things gets stinky. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Micro News. Hope you've had an awesome week and I want to give a shout out to everybody that's followed this week, people that have interacted with me on Twitter. I really appreciate you, really appreciate you guys watching. Um, quick note, we have some new background. I threw up a piece of white paper, thought I'd start sticking some stickers and stuff that I get from various things that I buy and maybe do some other things to interact with you guys some more, kind of spice up the background. Hopefully that can add some, you know, creative value to the news. I, I don't know. We'll see where it goes, but thought we'd give it a try. And um, I want to uh, quickly uh, update from last week's news. I talked about what I refer to as the MKR 1000. I did not realize the uh, Massimo from Arduino released a video this week. Uh, it's pronounced Maker 1000. MKR Maker. I mean, I don't know. I know that it's cool to have designators for products, but if you're going to call it the Maker 1000, just call it the, you know, M-A-K-E-R. I don't, anyway, not MKR 1000. So I just want to make sure everybody's pronouncing it correctly. Uh, Maker 1000. So a little update from last week's news. Let's hop into the news for this week. And starting off, first piece of news this week comes out of the FAA. Federal Aviation Administration has decided that we now need to register to use our drones. Now, we've known that this has been coming for a while. It's, there's, it's been in the news. Basically, the FAA says, listen, tons of people are gonna get drones for Christmas this year. We're starting to get a little nervous about how many of them are, that are out there and that they've had some run-ins kind of near airports and other things, and they want a way to track this better. And so, what's gonna happen is on December 21st is when registration's open. They uh, are providing a website for you to go and register to use your drones. Now, they, they build this as a user-friendly uh, web-based application process. I'm picturing the DMV. I mean, when was the last time you went to one of those and thought it was user-friendly? So we'll see how it uh, lives up to the hype. The screenshots look nice, uh, so we'll see how that works. Now, just some specifics on this. These are for drones weighing more than 0.55 pounds or 250 grams. Now, the important thing on that is that weight includes attachments. So if you have a drone that's lighter than that, but you want to attach a GoPro to it that pushes you over that 250 grams, you need to register. Now, the other important part of this is that it is not, you're not registering your drones, you're registering yourself. Um, so this isn't going to be a per uh, quadcopter or drone that you own. And so uh, from the announcement, it says owners using the model aircraft for hobby or recreation will only have to register once and may use the same identification number for all of their um, drones basically the registration is valid for three years so I guess we're gonna have to do this every three years you'll be given a number that then you have to put somewhere on your drone so that if an incident occurs they can link that drone back to you you get the idea um, you must register by February 19th of 2016 and have to be at least 13 year old 13 years old to use the website now there is going to be a fee for this it's going to be five dollars however to encourage people to get in there and register they are waiving that for the first 30 days and so it will be free through january 20th so if you've got a drone or you have one coming for christmas get your registration in before january 20th and you can save yourself five bucks okay next up also related to drones, and that is from Intelligent Energy. It's a British company that specializes in hydrogen fuel cells. They have created a fuel cell that is specialized, they say optimized for drones, that will take your normal like 15 minute battery life of a drone and push it out to two plus hours. That is amazing. If anybody's ever flown a drone, you know, those things are up, get them have some fun and then they're down, you gotta recharge, but they're talking about a two hour battery life on these things with a hydrogen fuel cell that then has the benefit of being recharged in just a few minutes with uh, some compressed hydrogen. Now this, they're targeting this more towards commercial applications, uh, but interesting to see this tech develop over the next few years um, to see how this can get into just consumer 
um, electronics, not just drones, but other things as a battery uh, fuel cell source. Now, they, um, they plan to publicly demo this at CES in January, so that will be an exciting thing to check out there. And they don't have any prices listed for this. I'm sure there'll probably be more information at CES, uh, but we can expect this to be much more expensive than your standard uh, drone lithium ion batteries, um, given the different tech. So, but as it becomes more mainstream and higher production, price comes down, interesting things could be happening there. Okay, rough, rough week for Philips. Uh, Philips, the maker of Hue, the light bulb that you can control uh, from their application, decided on Tuesday that they were gonna have a, there was an update to their bridge that was going to disable support for third party bulbs. Now, the Hue uses the Zigbee protocol, which is not a Philips proprietary protocol. This is something that you can go pick up a Zigbee module and use it in your project. And so there were other third party bulbs created that use the same protocol that would work through the Hue ecosystem. And Philips decided on Tuesday to push an update that would disable all of those. Now, if you remember, last year I did an episode of the news where we talked about FTDI bricking all of the knockoffs. You know, we've seen this before. This is terrible, terrible PR for these companies. Now, you know, in Philips' uh, defense, if you want to go there, they say that this is for user experience. Some of the third-party bulbs did not perform as well. They wouldn't turn off or they were sporadic. The, the interaction was sporadic. And so if, if other people are using your system to control their product and it's not working well, they're claiming we needed to shut that down so that we could control the experience and make it great for all of our customers. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I buy that so much. I think it's just trying to lock out competitors and you know you can argue it both ways but here's the statement from Philips they said we underestimated this is after they so a day later they decided to reverse this decision on Wednesday they said oh, we're sorry I mean this this ticked off the internet rage happened and so they said all right we'll bring it back and so now they are updating all of the uh, bridges again by Monday they say that should all be done so everybody will be back to third party bulb support. The statement out of them was, we underestimated the impact this would have upon the small number of our customers who currently use uncertified lights from other brands in the Philips Hue system. We have decided to continue to enable our customers who wish to integrate these uncertified products within their Philips Hue system. I do like, you know, the corporate speak here multiple times, the uncertified bulbs from the small number of customers. You know, if, if it was that small of a number, why'd you care? I mean, this wasn't a huge problem if it was that few people, right? But, you know, reiterating the uncertified products, okay, we get it, Phillips, but I mean, a little more gracious in the recovery there could have been nice, but I get it, you're trying. Now, the, as part of this, they're introducing the Friends of Hue program to certify bulbs. And so, you know, back to their quality uh, shtick, they're going to say we're going to third party people can come in and certify their bulbs and we'll get a sticker on the box. So when you're buying it as a consumer, you can say, oh, Friends of Hue, this is definitely going to work. I'm going to buy this. And so, you know, whatever makes good business sense, I guess, Phillips, but rough week for Phillips and the Hue ecosystem. Okay, next up we're talking about a company that came out of stealth mode this week, and that is Afero. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is founded by Joe Britt. You may know him as the founder of Danger, which Microsoft acquired for a cool half a billion dollars. That didn't work out so well for Microsoft in the end, but definitely worked out for Joe's pockets. And he is using some of that money we are assuming to fund this new company, Afero. He says it is very well funded, although he will not reveal who the funding sources are or if there are outside. Uh, we assume there's other VCs involved in this, but the purpose of this company is to provide the connectivity layer for Internet of Things devices. And I mean, I'll link up the, the article uh, in the description below on this. This was a really long article about the company. It's kind of an interview with him. Uh, with other things added in, but uh, there was a lot of tech jargony, vague speak. Okay, so I have to do a quick amendment to the news. When I shot this yesterday and I did the piece on a Faro, uh, I really didn't like the quality of it. I didn't feel like it was 
I didn't dive deep enough and get enough information to really give it a good shake. So I did that today. I looked into it a little more. I did a little more research. And so I wanted to give it a fair shake in the news because I was a little hard on it in my original filming yesterday. So without further ado, a pharaoh, I've already introduced who founded it and things like that. Now, more about the offering that they provide. The core of this is a, a little module. It's very tiny. And I did find the data sheet. It's actually on their site. Um, and so I'll link that up down below, but the gist of it is it's, it's a Bluetooth low energy device. You can communicate with it as a host. If your product is the host, you can communicate with the chip through an SPI interface. And the way this connects up to the internet at this point seems to be through some sort of hub. The best I could find was a diagram suggesting that a phone could be a hub or maybe some other Afero specific device that could be coming out in the future that I didn't see details for on the website. So um, it seems like they have plans for getting the data actually up to the cloud through Bluetooth as the uh, origin. Um, I don't know how well that, I mean, I don't know. It seems like that's, now you have to have a separate thing. So when you talk about this going into toys or other things, now it has to talk through something. And so maybe that's just part of their registration as a product. You have to do something on your phone, which seamlessly gives them access to their cloud that then product makers can access from the back end. I'm not sure, but um, I'll put up the little diagram here. You can see it right here uh, that sort of shows how they picture the Afero ecosystem looking. And let's see if there's anything else I wanted to cover on this. Um, the one thing I did think was pretty funny from the TechCrunch article was uh, when they interviewed on this, the, the quote they said is, uh, the way that Afero was designed through this module, the security system is hermetically sealed from the device all the way up to the cloud. Now, if you don't know what hermetically sealed means, I suggest you stop the video and look it up. I linked up a Wikipedia entry down below to help you. Um, and then after doing that, if you could please explain to me how a communication system from a device to the cloud could be hermetically sealed, I would be very interested to know how to accomplish that. So anyway, they look to offer um, a whole ecosystem here, easy setup for product makers, still not a lot of info. Like I said, just coming out of stealth mode, been working on this for about two years now. So be interesting to see how this product shakes out. All right. Last piece of news this week comes out of Netflix. They decided to totally drop an awesome project on the interwebs. And this is great. This is Internet of Things Netflix Socks. And, you know, Netflix created this whole page of how to create a sock that will pause your Netflix show when you fall asleep. Yes, that's actually a thing. And, you know, I thought this was a joke at first until I went to the page. This thing is beautifully done. It's, it's like a full product page. And they give the, the part list and all the instructions to actually make a sock that detects when you fall asleep and then pauses your Netflix show if you're watching it. And really well done. I mean, the, the page is beautiful. They have all the parts. They have all of the instructions for building this. The, uh, it uses an Arduino and an accelerometer. So the accelerometer detects movement. If it detects that you're completely still, it will use an IR LED to send the signal to pause your show. And like I said, Netflix has done a great job here. I mean, this is not their business, but somebody inside obviously has experience with this and did a beautiful write-up. All of the instructions there, they have the Arduino sketch to get you going. They explain how to program the IR codes for your specific setup and just really nicely done. Um, great to see. I mean, it just, just a cool project coming out of Netflix, not their core business, but man, this generated a lot of buzz for them this week and, and good for them because I think it's awesome. Which brings us to this week's tweet of the week. And it is from Stacy Higginbotham who says, yup, this is why tinkering is awesome. And I a hundred percent agree with you, Stacy. This is why tinkering is awesome. I mean, People don't even think about stuff like this. Now, I, I mean, I don't think Netflix socks are gonna be a real thing, and I don't think that's the purpose here from Netflix, but what a great way to get people really to raise awareness for this kind of stuff, DIY, maker movement of embedded things, and 
to get people excited about it and curious of like, wow, I'm looking at this part list and it's not very long and wow, there's full instructions here. This doesn't look too hard. I could probably do this. And that's the kind of thing that inspires people to get involved and to start creating things. And so Stacy, I completely agree with you. This is why tinkering is awesome. It really creates a cool, I don't know, just a, an excitement that really helps us raise the level of community involvement and people getting started into Internet of Things and making, and I just think it's awesome. Exciting, exciting stuff. If you're not tinkering, please start tinkering. It's a ton of fun. All right, that does it for this week's episode of Micro News. You know, I really appreciate everybody watching. Um, just really, really means a lot. I really appreciate it. Now, uh, I almost forgot. Ask of the week. Um, very simple this week. Do you own a drone? And if so, what kind? What brand or model? Uh, I'd love to hear down in the comments. Or if you don't, just say, don't own a drone. No drone. Or would like to buy a drone. Whatever. Put something down in the comments related to drones. And, um, you know, we got the new background here. Not much on here. But I would love uh, to use it to interact with some people. So if you would like to send me something to print out and stick up here like a symbol or something that you know that you sent so that you can see it next week. Uh, I would love to do that for you. Please keep it clean. I like the kids to be able to watch the show. But if you want to send something for me to print out, go ahead and send it. I'll print it out, stick it up on the board. You can see it next week. Go ahead and send that to kevin at sidwar.com. Really appreciate again you guys watching. I hope you have an awesome week. And until next week, happy hacking. In the Internet of Things, get stinky. In the Internet of Things, get stinky. I don't know why I can't get both of In the Internet of Things, get stinky. <laughs> My gosh. It was off. It was off screen.